Welcome to today's lesson on the process of cellular division. What we're going to talk about are the chromosomes in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells, so what the differences are there. We're also going to talk about the cell cycle. It's very simple in prokaryotic cells and then a lot more complicated in the eukaryotic cells. And in eukaryotic the cell cycle, they have two other pieces called mitosis and cytokinesis. So we're going to walk through those two pieces also. So let's start with the chromosomes. Prokaryotic chromosomes, very simple. Single strand of DNA usually, in a circular fashion, and it's held within the cytoplasm of the cell. A prokaryotic cell does not have a nucleus. So the DNA is in one circular chromosome within the cytoplasm of the cell. Eukaryotic cells, however, are a lot more complicated. One copy of the DNA is called a chromatid. When we go through cellular division, we actually have two copies of the chromosomes. And so that's where we have these, this X shape that a lot of times you're familiar with seeing as chromosomes. One side is called a chromatid. The two together are called sister chromatids. When it's individual, when you have the one piece and it's individual, it's called a chromosome. And the two together, the two copies, are also called a chromosome. So a chromosome could be made up of one chromatid or two chromatids. Now, the center piece where the two sister chromatids are attached together is called the centromere. Now, chromosomes are highly packaged DNA molecules. We start with the double helix of DNA, a single double strand of DNA. This then gets wrapped around something called a nucleosome, which is made of eight histone proteins. So the DNA strand gets wrapped around these nucleosomes. Now, these nucleosomes then coil themselves up into what are called coils, and then those coils finally coil themselves up into supercoils. So the supercoils would be like taking one of those old phone cords that are coiled up and actually taking that and wrapping it around and making a bigger coil out of that. So eukaryotic cells start with the double helix. The histone proteins come together to form a nucleosome. The double helix gets wrapped around the nucleosome. The nucleosomes form this single coil and then those coils coil again to form a super coil which then gets wrapped around together into, these, into the chromosomes. Now, that's important because it keeps the DNA from getting tangled, from getting cut as much as it um, into smaller pieces when it get, if it were to get caught on something within the cell. Now, prokaryotes go through the cell cycle very simply. You have a single cell that has a single copy of the DNA. That DNA starts to copy itself. Once you have a second copy of the DNA, the cell membrane starts to pinch in. When that cell membrane starts to pinch in, it will eventually attach together in the center and then will break apart and you get two separate cells. Prokaryotic cell cycle, very simple. Eukaryotes, on the other hand, have a very complex cell cycle. There are multiple steps and each of those steps have different functions within them. The G1 phase is the start of a new cell. Okay? The G1 phase is where cellular growth takes place. So when you cut a cell in half, you now have half the volume. It needs to get a little bit bigger. It doesn't want to get twice as big, but it does want to get a little bit bigger. So this is where the cellular growth takes place. It starts to make new organelles if it needs to, and this is where that happens is in the G1 phase. The cell spends most of its time in the G1 phase. S phase stands for synthesis phase, synthesis of 
DNA. This is where our DNA goes from that single chromatid that I was just talking about, where you have one strand of DNA, into the duplicated DNA where you get the two strands and it's hooked together at the centromere. Okay, so this is a copy of DNA. Each side is identical to the other so that when you reach the point of making a new cell, you can send an identical copy of DNA into each new cell. So in S phase, we get our chromosome, two chromatids that are made. G2 phase is where it's starting to pre prepare for cellular division and mitosis. This is where it starts making more organelles. This is where we start getting all of the um, pieces that are needed for cellular division start to get start to form. Okay. After G2 phase, we go into cellular division. Now, G1, S, and G2 phases are all what's considered interphase. So this is where the cell is actually going through its normal functions. The cell can go through its normal functions in any of the three parts of interphase. Once it reaches cell division, a cell basically shuts off from its normal functions just to be able to divide into the two new cells and then it enters interphase again. So cellular division is where we take and divide the nucleus, which is what mitosis is. Mitosis is nuclear division and cytokinesis is division of the cytoplasm. So that's where you get the two separate cells. So the cell cycle in eukaryotic cells consists of four main phases, G1, S, G2, and M phase. Okay. Now, the M phase, mitosis, actually consists of four more stages. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. You will need to know these stages in order. Now, a couple of students that I've had in the past have come up with ways to remember this. Funny little phrases. Someone came up with the phrase, purple monkeys are terrific. If you use the first letter, figure out what the phase is, and you can figure out the order. Somebody else said, pink monsters are terrifying. Somebody else just said, well, why don't we remember it as PMAT? Well, if you can remember it as PMAT, go right ahead. Whatever way works best for you to remember the order, figure out a way that works for you, and that's good. Now, prophase is a stage where the nucleus of the cell starts to break down. So what happens is the chromosomes now are within the cytoplasm. The chromosomes also start to condense at this point. During interphase, the chromosomes are actually in long strands. So they're not all condensed and coiled up yet. Going through mitosis, we don't want little pieces to come off from the chromosome, so they all start to condense up. So they condense up into those X shapes. And if you look over here, I have a couple of chromosomes here. This would be a chromosome, two sister chromatids. It would get attached. Same thing with the green one, with the pink. And then I also have the orange, which I think is gonna go off the screen, so we'll just use the three. So in prophase, the chromosomes are condensing, so we have three random chromosomes around the cell, and the nucleus is dividing. Now, in metaphase, metaphase is where chromosomes start to line up along the middle of the cell. So what's going to happen is along the middle of the cell, we're going to have these chromosomes lining up so that one chromatid is on one side of the cell and the other chromatid is on the other side of the cell. At this point, there's a structure within our cells, within animal cells, called a, um, a centriole, and those release 
form on one, each side of the cell, and those release things called spindles. The spindles attach to the centromere of the chromosomes. Now, during anaphase, the sister chromatids actually separate. And they get pulled to opposite sides of the cell. So as you notice, each chromatid is an identical copy of DNA, so each side is going to get a copy of the DNA. Finally, during telophase, you get the single cell, all the spindles are going to dissolve, and you're gonna, going to get a nucleus that is going to form around each of these. Now we're currently in a single cell, okay? We're still within a single cell, but we have a single cell with two nuclei now. The last part of cellular division is cytokinesis. In animal cells, it's very much like prokaryotes, and the cell membrane starts to pinch in. Eventually, it completely divides, and then you break into two separate cells. It's a little bit different in plant cells. In plant cells, you get the two nuclei that form with the chromosomes, but the problem is that the plant cell has a cell wall, and the cell membrane can't just pinch in because the cell wall is gonna keep it from doing that. So plant cells start to form what's called a cell plate, and a cell plate forms in the middle, forms in the middle of the two cells, and then eventually the cell membrane will come around and start finishing that piece. So, with our piece today, we talked about the process of cellular division. You should understand the setup of the two different chromosomes, prokaryotic and eukaryotic chromosomes. You should understand how the cell goes through the cell cycle, the different stages of the eukaryotic cell cycle, interphase, which consists of G1, S, and G2 phase, along with M phase, is the cell cycle. And then M phase is divided into two parts, mitosis, which is divided into prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase, and what each happens in each of those parts. And finally, cytokinesis, which is the division of the cytoplasm to finally get two cells. Enjoy your evening. <laughs>